Australian net licensing applications. And we do see a lot of clients use it. And as Robin said, even sometimes underutilize it. So we want to make sure that uh, you're using it in an optimized way so that you can, or the issues that are raised can be resolved quicker. Uh, you can free up your agent time, you can get insights into your data, and you can even automate away the processes that can be automated away. So we thought about all the clients that we've worked with and came up with five big tips to supercharge your service desk. Now, if you have been using Jira Service Desk before, you're probably using these features and functionalities, the service, self-service portal, the queues, automation, maybe some apps that you've downloaded and even some integrations. And we're gonna be looking at these uh, today. So the first tip of today is not even about getting your service desk to work better and quicker. It's really about thinking of ways to prevent the work from coming in the first place. And you can do this by setting up Confluence, AKA your knowledge base, um, in a way that gives your customer the information they need to fix their issues on their own through self-service. Now, uh, it's the whole concept of shifting left here. That's why we want a self-service portal. We want to be able to lower our costs. And you can reduce the support center's costs by up to 50% with this shifting left model, moving who is fixing the issue closer and closer to the customer. It also increases user satisfaction. You can get a 50 to 60% increase or improved time to resolution, a 30 to 50% increase in first contact resolution. And we're gonna go through this now to figure out how to configure your portal in a way that can achieve these results. So each Jira service desk portal can really only be connected to one Confluence space. Um, so how do you share customer documentation and technical documentation at the same time? And the way to do this is through the top level page permissions where you show and hide what is a technical document versus a customer facing document. And by using these permissions, you can see over here on the screen, all the children pages do inherit those same restrictions. Now, um, the other thing around this is what articles or should I be spending my time on? So what are those high touch articles? So you wanna evolve your content that you're sharing based on demand. And here's where that 80-20 rule really applies well. Spend the time where your customers are. So uh, those articles that they're referencing, that they're finding that are useful, well, supplement them with pictures, with videos, so that uh, your users get more value out of it. And you can find out which of the articles are effective, are being used through the self-service portals um, built-in reports. So think about also when you're writing your documents, how are customers gonna find it? What's their context? Use their words and their phrases to help improve uh, findability. One other concept to kind of think about here is the perfect articles aren't needed to deliver value. In fact, the perfect art, knowledge article can even be a detriment to provide value. So uh, most organizations take 60 to 90 days to document and then release new articles. And by this time, the window of opportunity around where that article provides the most values missed. So after 30 days, the value starts to diminish. So configure your tool to provide your support teams with the info they need to resolve their issues um, with knowledge articles that are still being worked on, but limit their visibility to the portal so that um, they're only shown when you're confident in the solution. And the way that we could do this is by using knowledge article states that help control the visibility. And I do this with an add-on called uh, Kamala Document Management because all articles, you know, regardless of if they're being worked on, if they're maybe um, not validated yet and published into the portal are still worth sharing in case another agent is dealing with that same issue. So how would this look? Uh, just kind of as a quick example, this would be in Confluence. You have your different knowledge articles that are there and they have different states. So I've just put the numbers one, two, three, and four here just so you can easily identify the difference between them. And all of these shows just the word error, 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 and error. And so one and two are validated, three is a work in progress, and four is not validated yet. For my customers who do the searching in the portal, what does this look like? Well, if they type in the word error, they only see the first two articles which are um, validated. And my agents though, from their agent view over here, would be able to see all of the different articles, even if they're works in progress, even if they're validated. And it would even show you over here saying, hey, um, we're not fully confident in the solution here, but it is there for to help you uh, with your issues. So um, not the final thing around Confluence that I 
want to mention, it's not really related to the portal though, but I feel bad about not mentioning it to you guys, is team calendars. So team calendars in Confluence reads your Jira data, and this way you could publish, for example, a list of your changes to your customers so that they could be across what's upcoming. You're going to be able to increase your transparency and accountability of your teams by providing this space or this calendar for your users to see what IT is up to. And uh, for customers who really want this, they could then subscribe to that calendar and it would show up in their personal uh, Outlook or Gmail accounts. 